Hello, I'm uh, Thomas and my colleague Julian will join me on stage uh, later for the second part of the presentation. And we want to tell you today about our journey with OSI Soft Cloud Services. So don't expect a full demo of the Tramminer platform, for instance. We'll demo targeted pieces that are relevant for a particular case we were looking at with OSI Soft Cloud Services. Now, um, before I go into that topic, though, um, I want to give you at least a little bit of context on what Trendminer is about. Um, our mission is really to empower business users. Think about process engineers, uh, asset experts, reliability engineers, ENI engineers, control room operators, those kind of users, um, to empower them with advanced analytics. Um, and the idea is that we don't assume that they are fully trained as full-fledged data scientists. Um, but we still equip them with advanced analytics to help them contribute to continuous improvement in their uh, factories and their companies. We do that for a bunch of verticals, um, process verticals primarily, um, all of them actually, so you don't get fooled by the statement on the chemical industry on this slide. Um, we also work in oil and gas, we do food and beverages, we do metal and mining, power industry, pharmaceuticals, utilities and so on as well. You see an, another logo on the slide here, which is Software AG. We are part of the Software AG group, and uh, the relevance of that will become clearer um, in the second part of the presentation, since that allows us to leverage some capabilities that are available in the group, uh, other software products, and we're increasingly leveraging those and um, even um, uh, looking into embedding those inside the Tramminer platform. And one of those capabilities is a very strong capability regarding integration, self-service integration, and you'll hear a little bit more about that in the context of the case because it's really strong to combine that integration capability with the Tramminer analytics capabilities and obviously the OSI soft uh, data infrastructure uh, capabilities. Um, the last thing I want to say about this slide is that obviously we are a partner of OSI Soft. We are a gold sponsor here at the conference. Uh, you, you've probably noticed that. We are um, a partner for several years or many years now, an ISV and OEM partner. And I'll explain you a little bit of how we integrate with the OSI Soft stack in, uh, in uh, the next slide or the slide after that. So bear with me. Um, but first, what can you do with Trendminer, really? So I'm talking about analytics. What kind of analytics do we mean? Um, we mean different types of analytics. Uh, starting from visualization over the more um, uh, historical data analytics, typically for root cause analysis, going into monitoring predictive, and importantly also contextualization. So let's start with visualization. Visualization, um, Trapminer supports you in, um, in visualization aspects such as uh, easy layering and filtering of, of data, so you can quickly superimpose stretches of data. You can spin up dashboards where you um, create your customized visualizations and you share them with other users in, in the factories. If you want to learn more about that aspect, you can, you can uh, talk to us, visit the boot, or, or, or talk to us afterwards. Um, but visualization for us really is the vehicle of communication between um, the users and the data signs, the data uh, mining machinery under the hood. So uh, we like to interact with users in a graphical way rather than having them type a lot of formulas or do programming. Um, and, and we believe that's a very strong and powerful uh, way to, uh, to interact. So suppose you are studying a, um, a particular uh, upset in your process or a process problem. Then you start probably by visualizing, um, visualizing that issue, um, but then you want to go and analyze it. And let's start with exploration. Uh, that's typically the first thing our users would be doing in that case. They would look for um, uh, to they, they, would, they would look for more of that stuff. They would like to understand what the impact of that problem is. So they start searching in their historical time series data and they mine for more of those patterns that represent similar failures, for instance. So they can understand a bit better what the impact is. Uh, they can also look at things like uh, how often does this happen? Um, what typically happens after it uh, or happened after it in the past? What have people in the control room said about it? That's a link to the contextualization piece there. Uh, so they start analyzing, exploring data like that. And once they're ready to, um, to go one step deeper, they can start using the diagnostics feature. So they can really go deeper and they can uh, try and identify root causes for the problem that they're studying. I'm just giving one example on a problem. Uh, you can obviously uh, use Trendminer in, in, in other use cases as well. 
but it's, it's a good one to walk you through the different uh, capabilities here. So we support different ways of doing diagnostics, doing root cause analysis. Uh, one way is to allow you to compare um, different stretches of data statistically and to understand where the differences are. There is other things we do, like uh, we issue recommendations. So suppose you have, uh, you're studying a certain unit, um, Tremonic can help you uh, uh, give recommendations as to which other measurements might be involved in a particular problem you're studying. And it's not just a handful of measurements. You can really do this kind of, uh, this kind of analysis across thousands or tens of thousands of measurements. So you're not limited to the box you're reasoning in. You, Tremonic helps you to get out of that box and also find upstream indicators, uh, maybe in a unit upstream even, from the one you're uh, studying here. So suppose you've identified an early warning uh, or, an, or, or a root cause. Um, if it's a root cause, you will probably try and take it away, but that's not always possible. And sometimes you find an upstream indicator that would be a good early warning, um, but it's not really the root cause, so you can, it doesn't help you to, to fully uh, remove the problem. Um, it's also easy with Trendminer to convert that early warning into uh, an alert, and that's the monitoring piece. So it's just literally a flip of a switch to convert that into an, a monitoring alert. And from the monitor, you can do different things. You can get alerts, uh, obviously, in your, in your email inbox, in the inbox, in the application. But you can also label the data and create new pieces of context out of those uh, patterns of interest that you're detecting. Um, there is also predictive capabilities in Trendminer. We have several types of predictive. I don't want to talk too much about that, but we have forecasting. We have uh, more the, the classical regression type of model-based predictive. Um, also, again, across this, this, this large set of measurements, thousands of measurements, uh, potentially, that you might be uh, mining here. And we also have the early warnings that I talked about earlier, and you can deploy those as alerts. Um, Contextualization is, is, is something that we invested in heavily the last uh, uh, period of time. And uh, those of you that have visited the boot have probably seen uh, Context Hub um, and, and the Dash Hub layer on top of that. Um, we believe con adding context to this type of analysis is, is, is very important. The context can be uh, shift log information, could be OEE records that you have somewhere, but it could also be event frames that represent uh, your batches, for instance. And that's a very important thing because it could be a good starting point for your analysis. So you can start with maybe uh, a high loss, or the, the most severe losses, and then dive deeper from there. Um, but uh, so context is, 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 really, is really crucial to add to your an analysis and you can do very uh, cool things there. You can actually do things like uh, adding common threads on the context uh, that, that you're dealing with in Trendminer um, or even add approvals, uh, approval flows on that, for instance. Right, so I want to talk obviously about where we integrate with OSI soft uh, tooling. And this is a, a more general overview slide of the different or some different integration points. Um, I want to go deeper into the OCS part uh, next, of course. Um, all right, so the first integration point is the time series integration, right? So if you just have a PyArchive, Trendminer will connect to that PyArchive and you will have ex 